Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Salar Khan's YouTube channel. And today we see the energy and power of a signal. And later on, based on this energy and power, we will classify the signal as energy signal or power signal. Now the heading is already written because I have already explained this topic once. But once I got there to close the video, I saw that I had not even started it. So I explained this everything to an off camera. So basically this is my second time doing this. All right. By the way, no problem. So the energy and power of a signal. So, so moving into the concept, we come to a little point. So let's say we consider a resistance through which a time varying voltage source is connected. So a time varying current would pass through it. And I could say that the power dissipated across the resistor would be the voltage times the current. And if I put V is equal to IR in this case, so I could say that, uh, that, that the, the power is I squared into R. Or if I put I is equal to V by R over here, so I could say that the power is V squared of T upon R. Isn't it so? It is. Right? So it's I squared R, V squared by R. Now if I consider this resistance to be of 1 ohms, if this R is considered to be of 1 ohms, so this would imply that the power would equal I squared of T or this would equal V squared of T. So this would be just direct relation. Now wherever we consider the R is equal to 1 ohm in all the equations based on this assumption, they are called normalized equations. Now I'm sorry for the speed if I have a little higher speed in this video because I told you this is the second time that I'm recording. So this is the instantaneous power, all right? This is the instantaneous power. I squared R or V squared of T by R. This would be what? This would be the instantaneous power. I could say it over here as well. Whatever be the value, okay? It's the instantaneous power. Mostly we are interested in the average power again. Okay? But first, you know, the total energy dissipated first. The total energy dissipated between any time interval. So between, I would say, uh, T1 to T2. So the total energy dissipated in this case, we know that energy is power into time. So I can say that energy is the instantaneous power into the dt integration from T1 to T2. This would be the total energy dissipated. You integrate the instantaneous power. If you have the average power, so how to find out the average power, again in the same limits, so you have the average power P, it would be equal to 1 upon T2 minus T1. Integration starts from T1 to T2. The integration of the instantaneous power B. Now the signal that we see in this course would be generally complex numbers. So I could say that we have generally complex signals. The signal that we would see would be generally complex. So what would we do if we have to find the energy for such signals? So the energy would be in that case, in that case the energy would be the integration from T1 to T2. We will have the value for the function x of t. We would take the absolute of it and then we will square it and then we have the integration. So this is how you find out the energy of a signal. Similarly for the average power of a signal. So it would be 1 over T2 minus T1 times the integration T1 to T2 X of T is absolute and then square. So this is how we do it. Now this red color is representing what? It's representing the continuous time signal that you can guess it from the integration. All right. Similarly, now if you have discrete time signal, for, so for discrete time signal, you know from the basic rules of mathematics, 
that we have summation in that case integration for continuous quantities and, and summation for discrete quantities so the energy in this case would be what summation n running from n1 to n2 and, and you have the absolute of x of n squared isn't it so similarly if you want to find out the power the average power so it would be 1 upon n2 minus n1 plus 1 and the summation from n1 to n2 the absolute of x of n whole square and let me check so yes this is absolutely right now these that i have mentioned these are for finite time interval signals for finite interval as you can see that we have what that i have mentioned t1 to t2 so t1 is some particular time t2 is some particular time similarly n2 is an integer value of some time and one is some integer value of some time but a question arises why this plus one that t2 minus t1 you know from the basics over here why plus one so this basically are di representing discrete times which means they are representing some integer values some points to be included so if we consider it through an example let's say n1 is 1 n2 is 6 so you have to do the summation from 6 to 1 so if you do directly n2 minus n1 so this would be 6 minus 1 is equal to 5 right but have a look we have 6 points of total 1 2 3 4 5 6 so these are 6 points from 1 to 6 but over here if we do n2 minus n1 so we only have 5 points so what about the other one point so this is wrong so to include the other point we have n2 minus n1 plus 1 and this is 1 I hope it is clear now these were for finite time intervals now what about uh, infinite time intervals so for that I would need some space and I would remove all of this part okay now let me give the heading for infinite intervals that is that this time interval would be in the range of negative infinity to positive infinity so in that case what would you have for the energy as you know the energy is what it's t1 to t2 x of t is absolute squared and integrated so we put the limit we put a limit that this t would tend to infinity so this would imply now if you put the limits directly so e would equal negative infinity to positive infinity integration of absolute of x of t squared with respect to t fine similarly for power so what would be the formula for power is like this p is equal to limit t tending to infinity and it would be 1 over 2t and you take some points at negative t and positive t and you have x of t absolute squared dt isn't it like this yes it is similarly if you have for the discrete time signals so for the discrete time signal again you put limit n then to infinity from negative n to plus n if you have for discrete time signal so you would put n tends to infinity the limit e would be limit n tending to infinity and the same formula that uh, n runs from n1 to n2 and you have x of n absolute squared and similarly the power in this case would be limit n tending to infinity and uh, 1 over 2n plus 1 1 upon 2n plus 1 and you have what uh, the summation n running from n1 to n2 you would be putting the uh, values and then you have x of n absolute square is that fine now when is a signal energy signal when is a signal power signal all right so for energy signal for energy 
signal the criteria is for energy signal what do you have the energy at infinity so I should write over here that these are for infinite terms for infinite time interval so for the energy signal the energy at uh, uh, infinite time interval the energy over an infinite time interval would not be infinite which means that it would be some constant value similarly for a power signal similarly for power signal we would have what the power in the range of time infinity would be less than infinity which means it would be a perfect number all right so i believe that's all about it so a signal is said to be energy signal if its energy is finite and if the energy is finite all right so let me say that this the, the, the less than infinity terms they represent that the energy is finite this also represents that this is finite and, and if the energy of a signal is finite this means that the power of it would be zero isn't it so yes it is the power is zero why because p is equal to e by t so i would explain it over here that p is equal to e by t so e is a finite number but we have this t at infinity so it, it would be some finite number e upon infinity so this would reach to be zero similarly if the for the power signal if the power is uh, a finite number so for that the energy would be infinite in this case the power would be infinite and how is this as you know that power is equal to e by t no so for this the e would be infinite right for this the energy would be infinite how is this so e is equal to p into t so p is a finite value t is an infinite value so you multiply a finite with an infinite to get an infinite so that's it that's all of family now if i have some points to read out from the book We have what? Don't have any other point, you know. Over here I have the this for signal 1.6 does not converge. X of n equals a non-zero constant value for all the time such signal have infinite energy. If you have a non-zero uh, constant value for such signal, infinite energy, over e less than all this. So this I have already discussed. And I believe that's all about today. I am a little, I am a little tired. Okay. Well, you know, I have made two videos today on the camera and one on the off camera. So basically, it would be three videos. So no problem. That's all for today. That's all about this lecture. That's all about the next clause. That is the energy and power signal. Uh, and, and the only thing that remains is the periodic and non-periodic signal in the classification. Well. The book has not seen it right now. First, we see some, uh, some uh, transformations on signals basically. So, I would check if uh, uh, what I have to make first. So, in the next video, I don't know whatever we will see you with. So, till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. And do remember me in your prayers and do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.